Hello, this is Eric D. Kirk for MamaWorld.com, and welcome to the first part of our character animation tutorial series for After Effects. In this series, we are going to create a rig for the following character. The rig is highly automated. If we just move the position of the character, she automatically starts walking and the wheels of the baby buggy are turning. Even the subtle swinging of her hair and the jiggling of the baby buggy are dynamically linked to the movement of the character. The entire rig is created in After Effects with the help of eye expressions. This means you don't have to read or write any expressions code yourself, but can create the entire rig using easy and intuitive interfaces. In this first part, we are going to create a skeleton for our character with the inverse chromatic functions of eye expressions. This skeleton will be the basis for all subsequent animation. We start with dragging the image of our character in the composition and lock it to avoid modifying it accidentally during the next steps. Now, we add this image to represent a bone of our skeleton. Since in the final result the bone will be invisible, you can also use a solid or any other layer as a bone. We move the anchor point of the bone to the end and duplicate it three times. We name the three copies, upper arm bone, lower arm bone, and hand bone. Then we scale and rotate the three bones so that we can place them on top of the actual arm of our character. So far each bone moves independently. If we rotate the upper arm, for example, you can see the lower arm and the hand don't follow. To change this, we parent the lower arm to the upper arm and the hand to the lower arm. Now, if we move the upper arm, you can see that the lower arm and the hand follow it. We could animate the arm now by keyframing the rotation of the different bones, but this is very tedious. Instead, we will use the inverse kinematic expressions of eye expressions. We create a null layer and name it Arm Goal. Then we open eye expressions and choose the expression IK Arm with two segments 2D from the library. In this expression, we enter the names of our layers upper arm bone, lower arm bone, hand bone, and hand goal so that the expression knows which layer has which function. Then we select the three bones and click Apply. When we now move our hand goal, you can see that the entire arm follows. This means, to animate the arm, we just have to place our hand goal at the position where the arm should point to and all parts of the arm follow automatically. This is much easier than animating the rotation of the upper arm, lower arm, and the hand manually. To create bones for the leg, we simply select all three bones, the hand goal, and duplicate all of them. Then we rename them to left thigh bone, left lower leg bone, left foot bone, and left foot goal. And then we move the upper leg and the foot goal in place. But as you can see, the bones of the leg do not follow the foot goal. This is because the expressions still contain the layer names of the arm. Since we change the names of the layers, we also have to update the layer names in the expressions accordingly. Hence, we enter the new layer names in the expression and apply it to the bone layers of the leg. As you can see, now the bones follow the goal layer, but the knee points in the wrong direction. We can easily fix that by checking the flip option of the expression and applying it again. As you can see, no matter how we move the leg, the foot always points in the same direction. We can still change its rotation manually, but if we move our skeleton by moving the goal layer, the rotation of the foot is always preserved. Next, we scale the bones to fit the size of the leg of our character and adjust the placement of the thigh and the foot goal. We also adjust the rotation of the foot. Once we are happy with the left leg, we repeat the same steps to create the bones of the right leg. As you can see, the bones of the right leg don't fit exactly to the length of the leg of our character, but keep them as they are since we want the bones of the left leg and the right leg to have the same length. Finally, we create a null layer, name it body, and place it roughly in the middle of our character. To attach the arm and legs to the body, we select the upper arm bone and the two thigh layers and parent them to the body. If we now move the body, you can see that all bones move with it, but the hand and the feet stay where they are. Often you want the hands of a character to also move with the body, which we can achieve by also parenting the hand goal to the body, as you can see here. But since for this rig the hand will be attached to the baby buggy later, we unparent it again. 
Now we have a ready to use skeleton that can easily be animated by animating the different goal layers and the body. In the second part of this series, you will learn how to attach the actual character to the skeleton so that it moves with it. Again, this is Eric Kirk and we'll see you next time, folks.